Hey everyone, this is Christopher Luxon, the former CEO of Air New Zealand. This is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. This is Tracy Ibarra. I'm an executive solutions at Dell Technologies. This is Travis Chapel, founder of Build Your Network. If you are wanting to learn how to embrace change and to navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, with my very good friend, Dennis Giannoutsos. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsos. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding their balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today. And if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. Hey, listeners, it's now time to adapt in our fast-moving world. And I want to welcome you to today's Ask Dennis episode, which is a freestyle episode. I uh, do two interviews per week with my guests, and then I do the Freestyle Ask Dennis episode once a week. And this is where I'm asked a question by our listeners, or I will share my thoughts, insights, and experiences from working with many leaders around the globe over the years. And Tim, I want to welcome you to today's session and just remind you that we've got the Facebook group, Leadership is Changing, and that has launched, and I feel free to go ahead and join that group because we'd love to see you there. It's a group whereby it's a community of leaders who go through change, who talk about change, leadership and so forth, and leading that change. We talk about all sorts of things and uh, that's where I share a lot. Also, I do some uh, Facebook Lives in that group uh, during the week and I share different topics and do a little bit of a deep dive in certain things. So if you haven't already checked that out, feel free to go ahead and do that. So this is actually episode 60, and it's uh, it's really exciting to be able to be at episode 60 already, and I uh, want to once again thanks all our, thank all our guests uh, that we've interviewed, also to listeners for downloading and sharing the uh, podcast with their network and so forth. It's been very exciting to be on this journey. But today I want to talk to you about how to become match fit. It's an interesting topic that I want to talk to you about. You know... Becoming match fit, what do I mean by that? Well, if you think about it from a leadership or you think about it from a business, entrepreneur side of things, uh, from a large corporate, small to medium-sized business, it's certain things that I want to discuss. And the thing that I want to talk to you about is when I work with leaders, entrepreneurs, you know, I I call everybody a leader nowadays, and um, what I notice is that many are on autopilot. They're doing things day in and day out, and they're just getting on with things. Now, for a lot of them, they're actually bored in what they do. I actually have people who have been telling me recently that they've been bored for the last year, 18 months, and what they've been doing. And I went, yeah, but have you been taking the salary for the last year or 18 months? And the answer has always been yes. The other thing, too, is that they're on autopilot, so they're not actually always giving their best, their A game. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Because if you look at any high-performance team, athlete, and so forth, they have to become match fit. Now, they are generally fit, but then are they match fit to bring their A game to the scenario? And that's what I'm going to be talking about with you today. And that is, what can you do to to be match fit? And there's sort of three areas that I want to cover off with you today. Because you see, for people to be match fit, to be on their A game, to bring the best that they can be, 
for the full 80 minutes of the match or the full week of the match, it's not always easy. And it always goes back to who is the fittest, who is the, the in the better shape, who can actually bring it home, in particular towards the end of the game. Now, for a lot of people in, uh, who are in leadership positions or in businesses, entrepreneurs, people like that, that's what they do on a daily basis. They go to the match, if I can use that analogy. They go and play the game, whatever their business is, whatever their role is, and they do that on a daily basis. And if they have to be match fit to be able to succeed, to be able to do well, and to actually survive in business today. And as we've seen, if you throw in COVID or a pandemic on top of things, it creates more chaos, ambiguity, the unknown, the unfamiliar territory, and for a lot of people, they are, aren't able to cope with it. But if they're match fit, it doesn't matter what's thrown at them because they will be able to sidestep it. They will be able to maneuver. They'll be able to adapt and move forward and succeed in whatever they're doing. So three things I want to talk about with you, team, in becoming match fit in whatever you need to do as a leader, as a team member, as a business owner, entrepreneur. Here they are. Number one is about you being health-wise. Number two is fitness-wise side of things. And number three is around mindset slash knowledge. I'm going to be talking about that, those three things then. Right? Health, fitness, mindset slash uh, knowledge, I should say. Now, what's really interesting here is that for a lot of us, we're thinking, oh, match fit, what are you talking about? But I, I just keep saying, keep in mind what high-performing people do. It's a bit like a racing car. For it to be a high-performing racing car, it has to have certain things. It has to be you know, in a zone. It has to be as they tuned in to be able to provide the performance along with the driver to give that sort of race and bring their A game, whether it be the car or the driver, to the race for them to win and succeed. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a deep dive around those three things. And let's talk about health-wise. So health-wise, the question I'm going to ask you is, how are you from a health-wise perspective? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest, where are you ranking yourself around your health today? Now, health covers a whole lot of different areas, right? So one is health-wise in the way of your body and uh, your organs and all that side of things. How are you feeling today? And are you all okay? But also, there's a lot of things that play into that. One thing could be around diet. In other words, what is the food intake like? Are you eating a lot of junk food? Because when people are stressed, when their back's up against the wall, when they are being challenged, for a lot of them, they will reach for food that may not be that healthy for them. Why? They're so busy. They're so stressed out. It's just convenience. I just grab what I grab, and it's not always good for you. So diet-wise is one thing I'm going to ask you to think about. And if it's not right, highly recommend that you start looking at that and maybe tuning in with some people who are able to do that and help you with that. The other thing is about water intake. What is your water intake per day? Now, water is a great thing because it's going to help flush things, but it's also going to help your joints. It's going to help your brain, help you stay alert because you're also going to be hydrated as well. Now, water-wise, how much are you drinking? Now, for this part of the world, I aim to have three to five liters of water per day. And if I don't, I actually feel there is a difference. I actually feel that I'm not actually doing it well in the sense of actually taking the intake. So it actually starts to affect me as a leader and the way that I perform, the way how alert I am as I'm um, if I do take the water or if I don't. The other one would be, do you do a regular checkup with your doctor, with your health practitioner? Do you do a regular checkup? Do you go along and see them? For now, for a lot of for a lot of men, they tend to find, or I find that they don't go to the doctor. They don't like going to the doctor, and I know because that was with me as well. And uh, I, if I don't want, if I can't, if I don't want to go to the doctor, I don't want to go to the doctor. However, there's times when we need to, and I'm going to encourage you if you haven't if you haven't had a regular checkup, go and get a checkup done. Because it's about you being on the top of your game, bringing your A game to the match and to be match fit as well. So if you think about athletes, if you think about you know sporting teams, 
they may put people through their paces to make sure that they are match fit before they do the final selections for the game as they go and play. The final point I want to make around the health-wise is the breathing. In team, a lot of leaders, especially when we get stressed, we get in that fight-flight mode and we have shallow breathing. If you can learn to breathe from the belly and having those deep breathing scenarios, that's actually going to help you a lot. Because you see, once you get more air, oxygen to the brain, it'll actually help. You will start to feel more calm. You will start to feel more in control. And you'll be able to do more because you're able to slow things down and be in control, but also be calm. Right? So it's really important that we learn how to breathe properly and that you're doing that on a regular basis. For a lot of people, when they get up front to present to people, or if they're out there in a situation whereby it's you know, a little bit, uh, there's a lot of emotion and so forth, they will tend to breathe less. I've seen leaders stand in front of an audience and go to present and they hold their breath. And I'm like, come on, breathe. And so it's really important, listeners, that you are breathing to help you in your health-wise. So around the health-wise side of things, it's diet, water, regular checkups, and breathing. All right, let's go to number two, the area number two, which is around fitness side of things. And so for a lot of you, you've heard about this, uh, about going and getting fit and so forth in the gym. Oh, come on, Dennis, do I need to go to the gym? No, you, you do what, what is right for you, Tim. You do whatever activity is right for you. The key here is that you do some activity. Now, for some of you, you might be out walking the dogs and that, and that's great to be able to get out there and do that. But also, see if you can get some activity just to raise the heart rate a little bit higher to be able to get things done. For a lot of us, we sit at our desks or we're in meetings day in and day out, hour after hour, and it's too long. For those of you who have got uh, devices on your wrist, like a a, a watch or a a fitness-type scenario, and it tracks your activity, your steps, you watch that as you're working during the day and you're sitting at your desk, it will be, it's amazing to see what happens, that you can get down to, you know, 1,100, 1,500, 2,000 steps for the day. And that's not enough. You need to be around the 10,000 mark and above. And so... Having that kind of device is fantastic. I'm not saying you have to go out and buy one team, but the thing is it actually will keep you alert and keep you focused on what you need to do. The important thing here is this. As we work from home today a lot, understand transitions, understand where we are with things and how much activity we are doing. Put it in your calendar that you need to go out for a 30-minute, 45-minute, one-hour walk, run, bike ride, whatever it is for you, swim. Go and do something that's going to get you out, get you some fresh air, get you that the heart pumping, the blood moving, but also oxygen coming in more. That's what you need to do. For too many people, they transition from the bedroom into the workplace within the home and then back to the bedroom during the night. It's, it's, it's hard and they, they find it hard. Why? Because when we work in an office or somewhere else, that transition, the car ride, the bike ride, the ferry, the bus, the train, that's our transition between home life and into the into business. Now, and then back again. For a lot of us, that's not there at the moment because we're having to work from home. And so what can you do to do the transition to enable you to be able to work through and do what you can? Also, for a lot of people, they're not actually having lunch because they're working, 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 they look up and it's 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and they still haven't had lunch. Team, be mindful of what's going on for you. Make sure you're doing some activity. Make sure you're doing some regular exercise. Even if you're doing a sort of you know half an hour walk a day, that is better than nothing at all. So make sure you're doing some sort of activity. But if you can become very fit and do things that will help your heart rate raise and lift, that's going to really help you a lot. And in attention to the way you stand, the way you walk, the way you talk, it's going to be very helpful for you. All right, so we talked about that in the fitness space. It's about getting some activity, understanding the transition at home between meetings and also doing activity, but also putting it into your calendar and working and making sure you're doing it. But exercise regularly and try and exercise where you're going to get your heart rate up. Number three. So number one was, again, just as a reminder, 
was around the health. Number two was around the fitness. And number three is around the mindset slash knowledge. I'm going to be talking about that. For a lot of people who are working from home nowadays or even in the, even if they're working in the business and so forth, what are you doing on a regular basis to help you stay match fit? Now, for a lot of people, if they've taken a big, long break or if they've uh, been working from home and they haven't been around a lot of people, for some, they miss that contact with people, the networking, being around people. Now, working from home, you're not able to do that. Yeah, you're able to get onto tools like the Zooms and Microsoft Teams and, and Skype and so forth and see people on video, but it's not the same as being able to meet people face to face. So the thing here for you is... What can you do to help your mindset and knowledge to allow you to stay ahead of the curve and be the best that you can be? Help increase the knowledge for you to be the best you can be in your industry. And so what's really important here is that for you to stay ahead of the curve, there are things for you to check out. Books, podcasts, audio books, white papers, articles, blogs, Uh, discussions with others, special interest groups that you can attend, whether that be on LinkedIn or whether it be face-to-face networking organizations. Try and see what knowledge you can get from the industry to stay ahead of the curve, but also see what market trends there are, what industry trends there are, what you're wanting to learn and understand. But the the other important thing is the networking side. Make sure that you keep networking and you go to relevant events. If you understand what areas you want to stay ahead of, and you can work out and, and determine what networking groups or networking events you should be going to, find out what they are, book them in your calendar, and then get on with it. Now, when you go to these events, what's your intent? Are you going there to have a cup of tea and a sausage roll or a scone? Or are you actually going in there to get some certain things done? And so think about what you want out of these different events. So, For your mindset, you need to be able to stay ahead of the curve. You need to develop yourself on a regular basis to understand the industry and market trends and understand what's happening in the industry today full stop. Understand what's happening for your customers and what they need, but also understand what your competitors are doing as well. And so that's that's really important as part of that being that match fit. In other words, you're bringing the whole package to the game. You're bringing that fitness, the the health side of things, and the mindset knowledge. So then you're in a position whereby you are on top of your game team. So in summary, there are three things for you to put in place for you to be match fit to bring that A game. And that is your health, your fitness, and your mind slash knowledge. Pull those three things together, work it on a regular basis, review it on a regular basis, understand what's going well, what you need to improve on and what you'll do differently going forward, then that's a very powerful formula to enable you to be successful in what you need to do. Team, if there's anyone, if if you need any help around the space, feel free to reach out to me because I'm more than happy to help you in this space uh, and help you do that. Uh, Listeners, I just want to thank you for joining me on today's session. It's always wonderful to have you here. Uh, Once again, check out the Facebook group. The community leadership is changing. Love seeing people join that group. And, uh, yeah, always uh, great to be there. And feel free to post uh, quotes and ideas and thoughts on in that group as well. All righty. Hey, listeners, what we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. And change is incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and the unfamiliar territory. And it is time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. What I'd like you to do is look out for the episodes as they've been downloaded. This is episode 60, and so that's, it's great. We're going to be going through and more, putting more episodes out going forward. Download them, have a listen, put a review and a rating. Feel free to share them with your network. And if there's any feedback you'd like to give me on the show or any questions you'd like me to ask my guests as I'm interviewing them, or if there's a question you've got for me on the Ask Dennis episode, which is a freestyle episode that happens once a week, then feel free to send me an email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. All right, team, have an awesome week ahead, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks for joining. Bye for now. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.